Hi, welcome back to another People I Meet. I promised you a bad date story and I shall deliver. This is gonna go down as the worst date I've ever had in history. I had emailed it to one friend. Bad lighting, hang on. Is this better? A little bit. I'd emailed it to one friend, her name was Celeste. No, she's not imaginary. And if I did have imaginary friends, then I would be creative enough to give them different names. So, and when I had told someone else about this date, she didn't believe me. She thought it was an internet date that I had read and I was so excited that it had gone viral. And no, as it turned out, it had not, but it's just such a horrible story. She didn't believe that she'd actually met someone to whom it actually belonged. Okay, so here's how it went down. This guy from work had set me up with a friend of his and I said yes because too polite, go along to get along. And I didn't really like this guy from work. Um, he thought we were best friends. He actually bugged the crap out of me. And he introduced me to Star Wars when I was 26, but he introduced me in the wrong order. He introduced me one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm like, the country went crazy over this. So. Yeah, I don't really get the whole Star Wars thing, why it was so exciting. I knew enough about it to know that Anakin and Princess Leia got together and I'm like, you're telling me Natalie Portman ends up with this 10 year old? Are you kidding me? So yeah, already not impressed by this guy. Plus he was a really interesting character. I, there's not one story that could define this guy. And I would, babysit his children from time to time mainly because they were cute and well behaved and I don't really know how because he and his wife were not <laughs> and they were complete hoarders complete hoarders I would babysit the children for the purpose of putting them to bed or putting them in front of a movie and cleaning their house it was I don't clean other people's houses honestly unless I'm doing it out of judgment that's that's a trait I do get from my mother and but you can't tell I'm doing it out of judgment. It looks like I'm doing it to be kind. Whereas my mom, you can tell she's judging you. Me, no, it just looks like I'm being nice. No, no, if I'm cleaning your house, I'm judging you. Okay, and just so you know, you don't ever want me cleaning your house because then you know I'm judging you. So yeah, they liked when I babysat their kids because they didn't know I was judging them. And I don't think they would care actually. Anyway, so this guy set me up with this other guy from um, that he knew and this other guy calls me up and says, so, um, so-and-so says you're an English major. So do you like words? Do I like words? How, where do you go with that? So do you like, do you want to hear a poem I wrote? And I let him tell me this poem he wrote for 20 minutes. Oh, wow. Was I too polite? And then he asks what my calling in the church was. Now, Mormons have this hierarchy of callings and mine was or a position you hold in the church and they're all unpaid. And mine was the lowest, which is like basically the one everyone gets upon baptism. And I was fine with that. Unlike a lot of Mormons, I had crap to do outside the church. I had a life. And I was, so I was fine with that. And he was like, oh, that's yours? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, well, mine is whatever, right? Something much higher. I don't care. And then he asks if I served a mission. Missions for men were two year or two years, for women are a year and a half. In my day, women didn't go unless they like couldn't get married. There was something wrong with them. They were losers for having gone. Now it's perfectly acceptable for women to go and they're not considered losers. Men, both then and now, are considered losers if they don't go. And so he's like, did you serve a mission? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, oh, did, could you not get married? And I was like, I could have gotten married. I haven't been asked by the right guy. Still haven't. In fact, I don't even want to get married anymore. And I was like, what about you? Did you serve a mission? He was like, no, I did a service mission, which is the kind that you do if you're like handicapped or something. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, whatever. And I don't care. I really don't. And then he's like, so why are you dating? And I'm like, well, I'm just, and I, I don't, I don't want to marry this guy. Okay. And I don't want him to think I do, but I'm too polite to not go on a date with him. So I'm like, oh, I'm just having a good time, I guess. And he's, 
then he proceeds to give me a 20 minute lecture on the law of chastity. Dude, you're not getting laid. I don't even know you, but we're, you're not getting laid. And then he says, well, what do you want to do? Um, I don't eat past eight. And I'm like, well, you can pick me up at six and yeah, we can go to dinner. So that's a very clear directive that we're going to eat. And he picks me up at six and it turns out we had met before at a party and I didn't like him then. And he's got this handlebar mustache out to here. And he's wearing so much cologne that my eyes are watering from three feet away. And he takes me to, he's like, what do you want to do? Dude, plan it, okay? Ask a woman out on a date, plan it. Just be a man, court her. Like whoever asks should plan it and should pay for it. That's why I don't ask. But really, be a man, be a woman, be the instigator. Whoever asks should plan it and pay for it. Don't make, don't ask to hang out. Don't ask someone out on a date and then make the other person plan it plan it. And I'm like, I don't know. Let's, let's go, let's go to dinner. And he's like, I'm not hungry. I'm like, okay, fine. Um, let's go bowling. So we go to the bowling alley and his door doesn't lock on my side. And I'm like, uh, it's fine. It's a small town. Let's just go in. And he's like, the door needs to lock and the door's not locking and the door's not locking. And so finally he comes over to try to lock it and it doesn't lock and he keeps trying to make it lock. And now he has completely broken it off its hinges. And he's like, well, let's go to my house and fix it because I'm a handyman. Fine, whatever. So we go to his trailer so he can fix it and he's not a handyman and he can't fix it. And he ends up like bungee cording it, but this takes way too long. And why am I so polite? Oh my gosh. Maybe it's the writer in me that sticks around for these stories. I don't know. But I'm like, you know what? It's my, I only live like a half a block away. I can just walk. And he's like, no, no, I wouldn't be a gentleman if I let you walk. You haven't been a gentleman yet, buddy. And he's like, no, 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 I'll, I'll drive you home. But it still takes him another probably hour before he just gives up on trying to fix the stupid door and bungee cords it. And then he's like, well, let's just drive around and talk. Ugh, just take me home. And I'm like, no, no, it's okay, just take me home. And he's like, no, no, let, let's drive around and talk. And I was like, Ugh, well, let's not waste gas. Let's go to McDonald's and talk. I choose the cheapest place imaginable and I'm hungry. And he's like, well, I'm a health nut. So no. So can we just drive around and talk? And I was like, oh. and I'm like, well, let's not waste gas. Let's just go to my place and talk. And he's like, oh, well, you have roommates. Okay, nothing's gonna happen. Ew, you're disgusting. I'm not gonna touch you with a 10 foot pole. Nothing's gonna happen anyway. Fine, whatever. We go to my place and as when we get there, he's telling me about how he was sexually abused as a child. A lot of people tell me this upon meeting them and I've gotten so accustomed to these weird stories upon meeting them that I can't tell anymore who's crazy and who's not. Although the handlebar mustache and the bungee cord should have been a red flag. And so I'm like, well, maybe he just, you know, trusts my resting nice face. I don't know. But then my roommate rot walks through and he's still talking about it. And I'm like, okay, definitely crazy because same people have boundaries and they don't talk, tell complete strangers, this strangers, this, although everybody tells me this, apparently I don't come across as a stranger. I've got a generic looking face. Everybody thinks they know me and I smile at everybody. So it's further confirmed. And sometimes they do actually know me and I've forgotten their names anyway. Then he finally went home. Grace of Allah, God, Jeebus, whatever. Phew. And I ate a banquet pot pie and that was the best part of my night. <laughs> Worst date ever. Okay, see you next time.